Hello YouTube chess lovers my friends this is Gunjan here and welcome to the third part of Dirty Chess Tricks. Now as per the request from some of my beginners to intermediate level subscribers I am presenting these tricks which can lead to very fast victory. Now before we start there are few points I like to mention. You only try these tricks against the people who are below 1600 rating. The simple reason is the occurrence of this trick is very high on that level and the second point is I strongly insist that you only try these tricks in the quick games so for example bullet of the blitz the good reason is in the long game your opponent has ample time to defuse it also the positive aspect is you can play against the higher rated player at the right time to catch the big fish on the hook so now keeping all these things in the mind let's get started when white plays the move e4, the most forcing opening from the black perspective is the move d5 and this is known as Scandinavian defense. Now here there are many moves has been tried but imagine my surprise which you are going to give your opponent knight to f3 and what can be more natural than d captures e and here we are going to play the move knight to g5. So attacking the pawn and more or less trying to regain the pawn especially and this is what happened in the under 1600 people try to hang on this pawn they think that okay I win a pawn so let me hang on and that way I will be material up so here black has a four replies and against each of them I have some nice tricks for you so the first obvious trick which I'm going to show you in the knight to f6 variation here I recommend that you play d3 and now once again if black allows white to regain the pawn then white position is again fine. So more or less if black wants to be a pawn up then he has to capture this pawn. So e cross d3 and now white is going to play bishop cross d3. We reach the critical position where black has to decide what he's going to do. Now if you look at the position carefully white has a wonderful knight seated on g5 and what can be more natural if your opponent is going to kick this knight well if your opponent is not feeling well about that knight then he will be shocked after your next move which is knight cross f7 bam <laughs> so you can see the knight is forking queen and a rook so black response is pretty much forced so black has to capture this knight and now white has the another tremendous move bishop to g3 check this bishop is not only checking this king but it's also preventing this king to go back to the e8 square which is the only square to defend this queen and if that square has been blocked that means white will simply win a queen the very obvious response is king cross g3 afterwards white will simply snap up the queen so there is a first trick exist in knight to f6 line in second line one of my opponent try to hang on to this pawn via bishop to f5 okay no problem here white will once again attack the pawn with the another knight and again black has to somehow defend this pawn and what can be more natural than knight to f6 and now you play a slightly surprising move which is queen to e2 so attacking the pawn on the third time now queen to e2 is not the best move but what it will do is it will force black more or less to play this move which is queen to d4 so defending the pawn third time with the queen when your opponent play this move you have more or less chance to finish him off within five moves so let's see those wonderful moves so first obvious response is queen to b5 check and this is quite nasty check because you can already see not only it's attacking the bishop but it's also attacking the b7 pawn so black response is pretty much forced black has to save a piece so black has to play bishop to d7 and now queen is going to capture this b7 pawn and here I give you guarantee and this happens many times most of the time your opponent is going to play bishop to c6 and they think oh not only I save the rook but I also attacking the queen well here you are going to surprise your opponent one more time with this wonderful move bishop to b5 
so locking this bishop and now white is all set to capture this rook so again black has to play this forcing move queen to d7 so maybe black will think okay if he's going to take my rook then i'll going to take his queen and most probably i will be exchanged down and a playable position but now comes a big shock which is bishop cross c3 the most obvious response is queen cross c3 which looks like saving everything but if you carefully look at it boom it's a checkmate this is a one kind of reverse england gambit trap which occurs from the white perspective so that is one good trick exist in bishop to f5 line now the third move which i like to consider which is a more uh, scandinavian type move queen to d5 not only protecting the pawn but it's also hitting this knight so white response is pretty much forced so white has to play the move d3 so protecting the knight and once again renewing the threat to capturing the e4 now if your opponent plays knight to f6 or bishop to f5 then white has a very simple equalizer for example if your opponent plays knight to f6 then the very simple will be knight to c3 and after queen let's say goes to the a5 then white can capture this pawn and not only white is regaining the material but white is also ahead in development so there will be no problem at all in this variation so that's why if black wants to retain any advantage then black has to capture this pawn once again so black has to play e cross d3 and here once again we are going to capture with the bishop which looks very odd because right now you are giving up the g2 pawn and not only that it also allow the queen to attack the rook so what can be more natural and this especially happen when your opponent is very greedy he is going to capture the g2 pawn so queen cross g2 and once again black is falling for a wonderful trick which is bishop to e4 so not only it's attacking the queen but the queen has the only square left which is queen to g4 afterwards white has a simple reply queen captures queen and after bishop captures queen can you spot it yep as bishop cross b7 and black will lose a rook so that is a one good trick exist in queen d4 line now after e cross d3 and bishop cross d3 in one of my game my opponent decided to go for the another pawn which is after queen to e5 check and when i block the check with the bishop to e3 he try to grab the another pawn so queen captures b2 and here i very simply play knight to d2 although white is a couple of pawn down but white has a tremendous piece development and you will see what a great dividend i'm getting from this tremendous development so here my opponent continue with knight to c6 i castle on the king side and now he played a natural looking move which is knight to f6 but such a natural looking move in this kind of scenario can be proved very disaster and that you are about to see so here i played knight to c5 attacking the queen and the funny part is queen has the only two square left which is either b4 or the c3 now if the queen goes to the c3 then the rook to b1 is very very strong planning is rook to b3 and nabbing the queen so in the game my opponent decided to play queen to b4 afterwards i played a very forcing move which is the move c3 once again attacking the queen and once again the funny part is queen doesn't have this time any squares left so queen has to forcefully capture this pawn and now white will play rook to c3 gaining more time on the queen and once again queen has the only square which is queen to b4 afterwards the move a3 believe it or not but nab the queen if you look at uh, queen has the only square left now which is queen to b5 and that has been played in the game but afterwards can you spot it yep it's knight to d3 check double attack to the queen and queen is out of the game so those are some of the nice trick exist in queen to d5 line let's look at the final option which is the move f5 
especially if you are playing a person which is under 1500 you are likely to get this move which is the f5 and here I recommend that you play a simple move bishop to c4 so training on the weak spot f7 and here black response is pretty much forced black has to play knight to h6 afterwards white is going to play the move d3 again if black wants to retain any sort of advantage then black has to capture this pawn and here the surprising move is c cross d3 so what's the idea of c cross d3 so idea is very simple white wants to play queen to b3 after the normal looking move from the black which is the move e5 the queen b3 is straight away on the card so you can already see now the three pieces are training on the f7 square so again black response is pretty much forced black has to play queen to e7 and now white is going to play knight to c3 knight wants to come to the d5 square so black has to stop it so black has to play c6 and now white is going to castle and look at the retarded piece development of the black all the pieces are sitting on the back rack and not only that there are nasty tricks exist here so for example in one of my game my opponent try the move b5 when you are behind in development try to getting active is a very wrong idea so here i simply capture this pawn and after c recaptures white played the straightforward move bishop to d5 so attacking the rook and how the black is going to defend this if you try to play bishop to b7 which looks like it's defending the rook but after queen to b5 check black will certainly lose a piece so that's why b5 is impossible instead of b5 the most natural looking move is knight to d7 since black cannot castle on the king side it's very wise for black to quickly go for the queen side castle and in most of the scenario you will find this is the plan your opponent is going to try so against this uh, we are going to play again the nature looking move which is rook to e1 and here black has the few choices if black plays either knight to f6 or knight to b6 for example let's say knight to f6 then the very simple will be bishop to f4 and once again not only white will regain this pawn and a tremendous attack on the black king but look at the black retarded piece development so the most critical move at this point is knight to c5 and after knight to c5 white has to retrieve the queen because the knight was attacking the queen so the queen has to drop back to the c2 and again the planning of the white is very simple white wants to play either f4 or bishop to f4 and get the pawn back and get the attack rolling so the obvious looking response from the black is to go quickly on the queen side castling now before we look at that there is a again one funny move played in one of my games so one of, one of my opponent try at this point the move b5 but this can be simply made with the move d4 so please remember this rook is now eyeing at the e5 square and beyond that it will pin the queen that means black response is pretty much forced black has to play the move e4 but now after very simple d cross c5 and b cross c4 white can immediately capture this e4 and because the queen and the king in a line black is in deep deep trouble other response left is to go quickly on the queen side castle and bishop d7 is the first step towards it but here white can again diffuse this whole idea by playing the move d5 so again the same idea rook captures e5 so black response is pretty much forced black has to move the knight to e4 and here white is going to capture this knight and after f recaptures and knight recaptures yes white allow black to go on the queen side castling but not without any compensation because white will play the move bishop to g5 and skewering queen and the rook so at least white will gain an exchange so those are some of the nice tricks exist in knight to f3 variation of the scandinavian i hope you learn and enjoy this wonderful tricks please try in your own game and you will be amazed by its potential best of luck and feel free to comment on my video i'll meet you soon bye